you are listening to ITRboxing.com radio with your host, Lukey. What's going on, Lukey? Nothing much, man. We just chilling. So you were at the OTC training alongside Keyshawn Davis, 138-pound elite guys, men's for the Olympics. Talk me through just getting sent home when you're training at the OTC, getting ready for whatever was going to happen out there. Uh, so the qualifying team was getting ready to leave to go qualify for the Olympics. We had like a couple more days left in the camp, but then uh, this virus started getting bad. And they called the team meeting, and uh, the head coach just told us that he had to send us all home because the OTC was about to go on lockdown. Okay, and were you aware? Because I know that training camps are very tunnel vision. Were you even aware of how serious the virus was until you had that meeting? Uh, I would see, like, a bunch of stuff on social media. but And then, like, once I started to hear that, uh, like, all the stores were getting sold out of everything, then I started to realize it was getting serious. But, okay, so now we're kind of going down boring territory because that's, like, basically life as we know it for the last three months. You were there training with, like, David Navarro, who's going to be a really good pro, a bunch of really, really good people. Talk a little bit about the training when you were at OTC and, like, the group of your squad that you were training amongst and how close you guys were. Right, so everybody down there is, like, probably the highest level of amateur boxing in the U.S. right now. Like, we had I was with uh, Shady Rojas, David, uh, Zander was out there. Uh, Tiger Johnson says a lot of hard work. Everyone's working hard, a lot of hard work. And at the same time, they're getting ready for the Olympics, so the workouts are even harder. And you're so, someone, you're not someone that just wants to box to box. Like, you want this to actually be a career for you, and you want to actually be able to make a living from it. So I assume that that must be exciting for you to be around these type of people and being pushed at this level in competition. Yeah, it's always very motivating training around guys like that. It just gives you that extra push in training. Were sparring days, not necessarily for you, but are, are like the first couple of days pretty intense where all the guys are trying to figure out where they're where they're at amongst the people or who's going to be the guys they're working with? Are there any days where people like show up and try to make a statement on somebody? Uh, well, they would they would have the alternates training uh, separately from the qualifying team, and then like we sparred every other day, and then we'd all just spar together. But yeah, on sparring days, you always try to uh, impress all the coaches because you never know what could happen. They might end up uh, changing their mind on who they want to take to Tokyo. And let's take it back, man. You went to the Olympic trials. You're in Lake Charles. How was that experience? I know it didn't kind of go the way you wanted, but just talk me through, like, kind of that experience and just kind of how you got to the OTC. So, yeah, uh, in December, I competed at the trials. I had four fights. I went two and two. I got uh, third place. And uh, the tournament was cool. Like I've never done a tournament where it's been double elimination before, and uh, like the final setup was was cool how they had the ring walks and all that, and then uh, yeah, so the number two ended up going uh, for the Nicaraguan team, and so they called me up to take a spot, and that's how I got on the team. Yeah, and I I know one thing about you is. You're one of these guys where a bunch of people are always asking me, what's Charlie going to do? What's Charlie going to do? And you know what I always tell them? I tell them whatever Charlie wants to do. I'm not I'm not here to make decisions for you. The, I get along with you. I like you a lot. But I ain't never telling you what to do. The only thing I've ever wanted for you is what's best for you. Um, what do you but I guess what I'm saying with all of this is, a lot of people ask me kind of what's for you. Are you going to just stay amateur and then 
see how things are because I know you're very proud to represent America. And if anything were to happen, I know that you would love the chance to go to the Olympics and represent this country. What is the future for you? Well, uh, Keyshawn uh, decided that he was going to stay. So I don't really see myself staying another year just to be an alternate. But with this whole coronavirus thing going on, I'm not really too sure what uh, me and my team are going to decide to do. I like that you said. (laughs) But um, it's kind of weird, man. How does that feel being a young fighter? And this is like, this is something I'm older than you, not a lot older, but enough older where it's like I'm older. And this is something I've never experienced in my life. And maybe people, hopefully people never experience it again, but you're this young, um, awesome fighter. There's chances for you to really be in a great spot. You've never felt better. And then this national pandemic happens where there's no fights going on. We're not sure when live crowds are. I know your family means a lot to you, and you'd love to have your family at your fights. If you were to turn pro, they wouldn't probably be there. Um, What are the thought process that you're going through right now with this pandemic and just thinking about your career and how the pandemic affects it? At first, I was pretty bummed out because, like, I'm at the point now where, like, I've been thinking about turning pro for a while, so I'm pretty anxious. But, like, can't really uh, complain about it now. This is just reality. So I'm just, I'm just training real hard and acting like I'm getting ready for my debut, and I'm just going to use it to my advantage. No, that's that's a positive mindset. And for those that don't know, I'm going to tell people: don't sleep on my man Charlie because he hits people really hard to the body. Don't be thinking that he's just Eris Landy Lara, man. Don't go in there thinking that because you might get dropped to the body. I'm just saying. What do you what do you think of my assessment, or sh- is that a chill chill Luke? You don't tell people too much. Uh, yeah, I think I'll surprise a lot of people with that, especially you, with eight ounce gloves. Shots yeah. they don't want to see coming. I mean, it's the thing about you that's always stuck out is you're an incredibly self motivated hard worker, and I hate that that's a a thing that we have to say, but with a lot of young boxers, especially they get by on just being athletic or they get by on certain talents they have and the work ethic might not be there. You're going to get better with time based on the amount of effort you put into the sport. Right. Always got to work hard. Always got to try to get better. So what are, how are you passing time during this? My man, uh, Charlie C, what are you doing? Like what's the, what's the Charlie C routine right now? So I just, I try to wake up early, get my cardio in, and uh, do my sit-ups and push-ups after. And I got a a little bag set up in my backyard, and I do my boxing, regular boxing routine uh, in the afternoon. And then I'll just, uh, I try to start doing the film study and watching a lot of more fights. Okay, now I'm... I'm going to make you have to tell me because I've been I've been on my film study, Grizzy. So what have you been watching? I already know you're probably watching a lot of Floyd. Yeah. Who are you watching? Mm-hmm. Floyd? Yeah, I I first started out watching a lot of um, Floyd's early fights, and then I had just last night started watching Roy Jones. Okay, that Angel Man Freddy fight I just watched the other night, and that's probably like – the Angel Man Freddy made the mistake of coming out to Limp Biscuit, and that age is really bad. And then Floyd put him on a T-shirt. <laughs> you know, did, did you watch that one, Angel Man Freddy? No, I haven't seen that one. That okay. one's a pretty funny fight because Angel Man Freddy stopped Arturo Gotti in like a fight where they just stood in front of each other and punched. There was like no skill yeah. component. It was just like, how tough are you? And then I just Floyd, watched the the Gotti fight. The Gotti Ward or Gotti, Gotti uh, uh The Gotti Floyd. Oh, that's just, that's cruel. Yeah. That fight, it was like, I remember watching that with my mom and just looking at my mom being like, this is messed up. <laughs> like, this guy doesn't know what's going on, man. He's just like tough and just getting hit. It was basically like looking at 
what's that called? Like the cannonball bag, the big circle bag in the gym. It was like just a guy hitting the, that bag. <laughs> it wasn't moving his head at all. I mean, but when you watch these fights, like obviously a great fighter like Floyd, he has supreme intelligence, but he also has a work ethic like no other. He has coordination from years and years of repetition. What are just subtle things you pick up on? Because I'm a firm believer watching greatness, greatness rubs off on you. Uh, I just noticed, like, the little things that he does. Like, like when the guy gets too close, he'll put his forearm, like, covering the guy's face, and then he'll, like, start throwing right hands to the body, right, right hooks to the head, and little stuff like that that I try to pick up on that I could start to use. Uh, to my advantage. So just like how to how to stop a guy from negating negating yeah. action, or how to, how like maybe this is something you'll probably hear like a veteran fighter with a young fighter like yourself is probably going to do dirty tactics to you, physical headbutt, and how would you kind of ref your own fight or use your skills to beat them? Right. Okay. Well, what do you? What is the thing that you're most excited about the pro game? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just I'm just ready to do it already. Like I've been I've been thinking about turning pro since I started. Like walking out, seeing the crowd, winning the world championships. I'm ready to do it. So you fought at um, not Kizar, but what was that? Um, the Longshoreman's Hall. You fought there on one of those cards as an undercard bout back in the day in front yeah, of a lot of people. On a Kareem's uh, pro card. Yeah, it wasn't like did that kind of get you going? Because that was basically like a pro environment. Devin Haney was on the card, and yeah, you yeah. were on that. Yeah, that was a that was a cool show. Like, uh, there's like a big crowd. And, a lot of uh, noise going on in there. Because I think that's what some people don't understand. I I wasn't at the trials because I suck, but um, there's not a lot of people in the crowds, even at these national tournaments. It's mostly like parents of the fighters and a couple other people. It's just all coaches and fighters, really. It's pretty whack. Like, I hate to say it like that, but it's not like some rowdy people that want to see a fight. Because, like, your fight with, like, uh, Dallas, or I believe Danny Garcia, like those fights, if there was a live audience, people would have been cheering and applauding the ballot. But like when it's just fellow fighters, it's like people are quiet and studying what you're doing. So I don't know. It, I, how does that play into an amateur competition where like the crowd isn't really reacting to what you're doing and you have to kind of count the punches in your head or however you do it? Well, I was always told to not let not let the crowd get to me anyway. So I try to not even really focus on that, and I don't think it's ever really bothered me. So I'm mm-hmm. usually just laser focused right before I go into the ring, anyways. Who are some emerging young fighters that people that listen to this show should be on the lookout for? Uh, right now in the Bay Area, we got uh a fellow Team USA member on the youth, Amari Jones, at 152. He's he's doing his thing. Uh, his, like, uh, their teammates, Team No Smoke, uh, D. Johnson and Dominic Reed, they're on the come up, too. Uh, I think they're going to do uh, very well at the next U.S. Championships. Okay, and that, yeah, I mean, like, I think they're working really – I see them already working – I think that what's going to happen, and I've been telling people, if you want to be a pro fighter right now, the people that work hard right now are going to be the ones that have an advantage over these other fighters because there's going to be fighters that are out of shape or that are going to wait. And and what I'm trying to say also is don't listen to me and put other people in danger because there is a health crisis and the scientists are saying don't do dumb stuff, be safe. But however you can try to work out, you have to try to work out in a safe way if you want to be a boxer at a high level because 
three to four months of not training is not going to get it done when you face a Charlie Sheehy who's been in his backyard punching a heavy bag for 15 rounds and running like Rocky and doing sit-ups till his stomach hurts. It's just not yeah. going to do it. Yeah, you gotta you got to find a way to stay in shape and keep getting your workouts in. Is that kind of like the ultimate thing about being a fighter is like you have to be so self-motivated. Like you can't – you have to look forward to these workouts – at work, yeah, most it's, people. yeah, it's very easy to just like lay around and just not do it. But before you know it, a couple of weeks will pass by, and all the work you just put in the months prior, it's it's not there anymore. You're out of shape. Now you have to redo all that just to get back to where you were two months ago. Well, and I think that's the thing. Like, say your next fight, right? They're gonna build upon where you were last you might fight someone that's trying to work back to their where they once were before this right. quarantine. That's why I'm using – that's why I see this as an advantage for myself because I know I'm working hard, but I don't know if my opponents are going to be able to say the same. Are you spying on people? I know you love your social media. Are you on the social media grizzly and just looking up people's accounts and seeing like, okay, they're slacking off? Uh. Not too much, because I would do that for, and for the amateurs, but uh, I think that chapter is coming to an end, so I'm not really too focused on them anymore. I, I can't lie. I'm looking at people, and I'm checking with whether it's a pro boxer or whatnot, and I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. They're not posting any little jogs or sit-ups. Yeah. I'm taking notice. I'm taking notice. I'm writing that in my little – that's going in a manila envelope. But okay, well that's interesting. So before I get you out of here, what's your what's your update on your two K character? Uh haven't really been playing two K. No so what are you playing? Because I know you love two K. Uh I started playing uh on my phone, uh Madden Mobile. Started playing that. Okay, so what what's the thing that's got you addicted on Madden Mobile? What's the little mode you're playing? Uh just like Little head to head drives and all that. It's pretty fun. I would be on TK, but all my friends started playing uh, Call of Duty, and I've never been good at those games, so I don't get them. Yeah, Call of Duty, I, I, that started in like 08, and that was one of the most depressing things in my life ever because it was like, I would, what do you call it, respawn, and then people would kill me right away, and I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. And I'm so competitive that it's like, I don't want to just be the guy that loses. Yeah, that's how it would be for me. I play yeah, Fortnite too. I went down to my garage, my my storage, and I got my PlayStation Three so I can play Fight Night. So I've actually been on the internet giving people free fades on Fight Night. Um, do you still play that? Yeah, surprisingly they do. Like old heads like myself, but I'm I'm putting pause on some people, man. I'm hitting people with good. All I do is a jab and a right hand. That's all you get is a one two from me. <laughs> that's all I do, but it goes it goes pretty far away. But I've been playing Fight Night and I've been playing Tiger Woods and a bunch of people your age have been calling me an old head and I'm happy being an old head. I'm just in my old head zone, okay man? Just let me let me live. But Call of Duty made a comeback? Uh yeah. They the it's called like a war zone, so it's kinda like a battle royale, kinda like how Fortnite is. So okay. like a lot of people have been playing that lately. The thing I don't like about video games now, and this is another old head complaint, I have my own Wi-Fi. I don't want to play, pay PlayStation $10 to use my own internet. Oh, uh, yeah, to play online? Yeah, it's just a scam. That's the only time video games are fun, too. When they're online? Yeah, when you play with your friends. Yeah. You're not, you're not someone that's going to play Dungeons & Dragons on PlayStation? Nah, I'll lose interest in it. I tried to play... Uh, have you ever heard of a game called Final Fantasy? When I was a kid, I tried to play Final Fantasy, bro. And I, for the life of me, I still can't figure out how that game works. Because I, I got myself into a fight, and we took turns, and I'm like, oh, buddy, I'm screwed. Because I've never been in a fight where you, I get to punch you, and then I wait, and you punch me. I'm like, this shit is not how a fight happens. <laughs> like I've never heard of that game. 
oh my god, it was the worst because back in the day I used to read magazines and people were like, this is the best game ever, and I'm like a moose man was fucking me up, man. Couldn't beat this moose, and I'm like, well, how do you play this game, bro? It was just awful, man. But any any thing people should know about you while you're on the grind. Obviously, this is boring. Are you is the gym doing okay? Fire in the ring. Do you know anything about that? Uh, honestly, I don't even know. I'm not sure okay. when they're gonna reopen. But uh, I'm just staying ready. Whatever's next for me. Uh, once this thing ends, I'll be ready to start fighting as soon as I can. Yeah. Are you at least are you doing any activities outside of just being in the house all day? Are you like going to get takeout every now and then or anything? Or are you just jogging early in the morning and then punching a bag in the afternoon and then hanging out with fam and watching fights in the evening? Yeah, I'm just pretty much that. I don't really go anywhere besides when I go outside to work out. Okay. Well that is um that is a very fighter like thing to do. Well, I look forward to seeing you back in the gym and all that stuff, but I have no clue when this stuff starts up. I guess before I get you out of here, tell people all the people you've sparred with because people are famous of like really famous people. They like them. So you can impress people by saying all the people you got in the ring with. Uh, I've sparred with uh, Victor Casillas, Andy Vences, um, uh, George Cambosos, Xander Zayas, uh, Emmanuel Tego, uh, Amir Imam. Uh, I've sparred with Jose Zapata. How was that? Is that Sean? Yeah. Yeah. I sparred with him down at Wild Card. I, I heard he's like, a, like an OG sparring session legend in L.A. Heard he's like a super OG. Yeah, he he's slick. He's pretty fast. I was I was doing good with him. Yeah, because he had, he gave my man Jose Ramirez some problems. But um, mm-hmm. keep going with what you what you got going. Uh, and then as far as amateurs, like I'm sparring with uh, Keyshawn Davis, uh, Tiger Johnson, and all those guys on that. Olympic team. So you just barred who I can think off the top of my head. There's a bunch more. Basically, in the amateurs, you fought everyone that's near your weight, and you haven't ever been like badly beaten or anything. I think it speaks worlds to the credibility of how good of a fighter you are when after you fought, Keyshawn Davis gave you props on Instagram. Yeah, and me, me and Keyshawn, we've been we've been cool for a while. We've been on the team together before and I still I, just I knew still that was going to be my uh, rival going into that tournament I still think it speaks a lot to how good of a fighter you are where someone people are comparing to being like one of the best fighters coming out of this class gave you props and that doesn't happen very often right so okay well enjoy the rest of your day have fun on Madden Mobile and all that stuff where can people follow you uh, you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Charlantis. For more great shows, please go to iTunes or wherever podcasts are found and leave us a review.